it is your buddy peace and harmony with you here today much love going out to all the beautiful empowered harmonizers we're zooming in and focusing in a little bit more in depth on what it means to be with someone who is toxic somebody who is manipulative or controlling or narcissistic and a great viewer question that we're going to zoom in and focus in on and what does it mean about their superficiality what does it mean if someone is really superficial or grandiose so when it when it comes to understanding really the dichotomy the back and forth the relationship dynamic with someone who is narcissistic there is a real lack of turning in tuning into another's emotional world so when we talk about the superficiality it doesn't just mean that they like to wear you know green and that they like to you know have such a length of hair I mean not superficial things like that but it's really more meaning that they're about appearances labels and really what is on the outside so of you know setting up the appearance as if seeming as if there is a devoid of tuning into the emotional world of another the internal world of another in other words really where you live which is truly your feelings you can't separate a body from its mind and body connection a narcissist doesn't want to pay homage or attune to that inner world of others because to do that would be to be known as equals or to level or to have a heart-to-heart -heart or to be at one with and to really set aside their emotional needs for another's in other words to give somebody the time of day to be able to pay attention to what they're bringing up to be able to you know pay attention to their subtle hints their subtle requests their needs and to be able to, to attend to that and speak with somebody and be able to have that depth and meaning and value of a relationship a narcissist is really all about the labels they're all about the ego they're all about the title they're all about really sort of pushing that egoic weight around even if it crushes somebody's inner world even if it crushes somebody's wishes dreams you know their pleas for help they're 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 begging to be listened to they're you know putting up you know fights and struggles you know why can't you get this why can't you understand this is because they're not attending to and focusing in on the inner world of another let alone for themselves a narcissist really puts a lot of psychic energy into really that egoic labeling that sort of dividing factor the divisiveness my religion your religion my this your that me and you you know us and them they're really into that separation effect because for them that's how they get leverage leverage meaning that's how they have power over others and there is it's very difficult to get sort of this leverage away they're too quick they're too condescending they are too practiced and rehearsed in the ego labels of interactions so you can't really challenge them you can't really go up against them narcissists do not like to be challenged especially when it comes to something that they're basing a lot of their egoic value or power upon so a narcissist might put a lot of pressure or value on the superficial the superficial meaning labels titles really you know things like income things like their religion you know you know it's these things can be thought of as deep or meaningful but it's really these terms that they tend to sort of edge people out and edge themselves in so there's never it's there it's never really up for discussion debate sort of having a thoughtful communication or conversation about there are certain things that you will learn with a, a narcissist are standoff topics you just don't go there you just don't talk about certain things and you'll learn you can't talk about religion or politics or go up against them about certain other things 
that are super important to them, especially when it comes to their appearances. They want to appear as if. Put on a smiling face. Put on this external persona, which a lot of people don't question. That's all that they see is the superficial. And yet there is a lot going on underneath the surface. And you'll know that oftentimes because of their absence for things that are meaningful, especially to you. They won't want a lot of spend a lot of time on that. Something that's important to you, unimportant to them or unimportant in in the big scope of things to them. Even if it's important to you, they will not stop and be able to give a look and a listen even if you say it's important to you or even though this might be sort of your redeeming quality, you know, everybody likes this about you. Everybody finds this attractive. This is like who you are. This is your identity. This is your strong suit you'll find that the narcissist doesn't, you know, take acknowledge and validation of that because to do so would be to put one check mark on the your strong side, your talented side, your right side, and it takes away from them. So anything that sort of is perceived by a narcissist to detract or take away from their power, particularly, or their foot up, their leg up, their shoe up, anything that threatens that to them, in their mind, it might not even be a true threaten, but the narcissist will over perceive the superficialities as super important. So you're, you're going to find that they really hang on to those things like titles, those things like um, experiences of the past where they can kind of always, you know, ho hover it over you hold it against you, hold it over you and, and use it as a form of leverage. So there's never ever sort of settling, rectifying the truth, evening, evening things out because the narcissist will, will count on this ability to have this separation. The narcissist is all about separation, me versus everybody else. And then, so if you are on their bandwagon, if you are their ego strokers, if you, you know, go along and, and fluff up their feathers, if you talk them up and side with them, even if it's to devalue yourself, the narcissist will, will find that an okay situation and just sort of grill it in. And that it's, it's an emotional sort of etheric energy with which you, there's really a, a, a lack of attunement and it's this emotional energy which is really the foundation. You can't really ignore it if you're in a relationship with them for any due amount of time. Is that you'll find they're highly opinionated and highly about I am right and they'll even, you know, create a big issue talking about people behind their back if it means them appearing right, that they have the only viewpoint. So it's very important to know that with relationships that function, you have to be able to be with someone who takes your viewpoint, your perspective into consideration. If they are not tuning into your internal world, if they're not getting where you're coming from, if they're always sort of taking it or using it against you or using any sort of element about yourself to make them look good. It's never for the authentic, the genuine, the just, you know, being able to connect. There's always sort of an ulterior motive, which can then lead them to betraying you when you least expect it. You know, the backstabbers, the people who talk about you behind your back, you find certain things, emails that they've written or texts or things like that, that are betraying of your trust. So really it's the trust issue that is really part of the divisive area. In other words, trust is, if you don't have trust, you really don't have anything. If you cannot trust this individual and to have them be able to tune into your internal world, that they're always sort of about the superficial. They're always about, you know, putting up appearances, wanting to make a show, wanting to appear as if. Even if it means lying, even if it means hiding things, which could make them vulnerable and just plain old human, 
the narcissist will go at great lengths to cover that up. In fact, they'll oftentimes put that as part of their persona. In other words, the very thing that could make them human, vulnerable, just on on the level with everybody else is those those are usually I find the areas that the person is most wanting to fluff up and the the um, aspect that they're what most wanting to drill in up to others and keep it in front of them on a daily on the daily you know they they want to be perceived as such and so they're very controlling of information so they're always wanting to control the flow of information and you know be sort of sly about that um they don't like other people to confront them or to be a intimidator or to detract from anyone else who might be able to add in or direct or be part of that flow of information in other words something once again that you might have a strong suit at that might be important to you it's a value you know it's something that can be a redeeming quality of you it, it could be you have a good heart it could be that you have a uh, reverence for the divine that you're very pious um, that you uphold specific family values that makes you you and that it has worked for you you'll oftentimes find that you won't be able to have this coexist with someone who is narcissistic because that core of you that inner world oftentimes is what is run over glossed over not attended to not valued so when you are not valued for your inner world what you're feeling your take on things your experience you'll find that then this is relegated to the external to the superficial and you know being very superficial meaning trying to yes be all about appearances external materialism um, shows of status the Rolex you know the car um, whatever it is that's their latest and greatest they're going to want to always keep that in front of you and give it more weight and credence than anything that your inner world has to do with so you can go through something as severe as a loss of a family member a loss of a job a loss of your health you know even if it's just you know a you know a 48 hour flu bug you know you'll find that the narcissist is wanting to stay off topic they're not you know going to ask well how are you if it is it's very superficial or you know sycophantic to them meaning false meaning not genuine not sincere and and so your inner world because it does not get attention it tends to become it becomes to wither away really you know what what you have focus on grows the law of attraction you know speaks of this and it's very very true what you focus on grows and what you where, where you focus you know where where energy goes your focus goes or rather the other way around what you where you focus where focus goes energy flows where focus goes energy flows so if these people are always wanting the attention so where a lot of other people they really don't want that attention they're not wanting to call attention to themselves they're just wanting to kind of be able to do their thing and not have to take you know this support from outside a lot of healthy people they don't need that they just do right for right sake they have value for value sake they have principle for principle sake they have an inner world because this is where they live this is where the good stuff is it's their heart it's their truth it's their reality so you know people might say you know this person is so fake they're so unreal they're you know you can't really have trust with them because there's this inattentiveness to the inner world of another you might also see this displayed as lack of empathy so you know you might feel that oh well maybe I'm just too needy or maybe this is just not a good topic to talk about so I should just shut up and put up so that is really where the narcissist gets their first claw into the addiction or the reliance and on supply and getting sort of into in a situation where you can then take on a lot of abuse or 
feel neglected, feel put off, feel unattended to, to feel ignored. The problem is that a lot of people make this mistake because they feel in the name of love, I must focus on this other person's needs. In order to be loved, I must focus on this other people's needs. In order to keep the relationship going and to keep them happy, I must make it all about them. And that is my role. That's my job in the relationship. So there's this self-sacrificing altruism, lack of attention and flow into themselves. So if you're feeling like life is not flowing for you and you've been in a relationship with these people, it's because oftentimes where the energy, where the focus goes, the energy flows. So if you're always focusing on them, then you're losing energy to them. Like, you know, like trying to, you know, have heat a home and keep an, a, a window open in the winter, you're losing energy to this person. It very is a emotional, psychic, life force energy, which is lost to this person because it's, it's neglected, it's negated, it's put null and void. The, the, the narcissist will not really be able to be in that in-depth, sort of heart to heart relationship. If they do, then if they get there, they're always fearful that you might, you know, use this against them or basically it's like you're pooping on their parade. In other words, once they've had that conversation, it's very difficult in the mind of the narcissist to get that sort of that perfect perfection or that performance, you know, outer level of persona back. So, if they go there, you can bet that they're going to be moving on for supply because they don't like to be challenged. They don't like to be questioned. They don't like to be called out. In fact, they will do anything to not be called out. They do not like to be challenged, even if it's for their own good, the good of the relationship. It would, you know, help alleviate them. You know, it can be a, a bad um, habit. This person might be an excessive drinker and that's part of their narcissism. It's part of their self-absorption that they don't no matter, you know, they don't care who, you know, whose time it takes away from that they're absorbed in their drugging or their drinking or their shopping or these other process addictions. You know, they can be highly, you know, addictive personalities because they have this insatiable need for control and for power. It's really about a power play. And to them, if they can dismiss other people's inner world, and that, that gives them all the more room for them to have the profile, the attention, the you are the best experience for them in the relationship. So for once again, it's their reputation. It's how it's appearances that they don't like to have called out. And if you do, you're really gonna set yourself up for really a lot of um, struggle and a lot of, you know, uh, trying to regain sanity, footing, and self-trust in your life. Because this lack of trust is, not only is it experienced in the relationship, but it is an internalized state. So then you feel this there's going to be an, uh, an, a, a simultaneous experience of lack of self-trust, otherwise known as self-doubt, low self-esteem, guilt, hesitation, um, vacillating, indecisiveness, not being able to flow in life. You know, you have emotions flow. You know, if you aren't able to sort of culminate and, and complete the cycle of you know, discussion with a person. In other words, to feel validated, heard, to have that experience. The super, you know, the, the narcissist will just not give attention. They will not give attention. So there will not be this feeling of them putting energy into you or effort or being able to, you know, factor this into consideration. It just, what is important to you, which is really truly your inner world, your inner life, what is truly important to you and to be able to live there, you know, becomes then this rat race with the, the life of a narcissist. So people can keep it juggling for, you know, so long 
to their arms and their mind gets tired or that they discover some heartbreaking information that they've been cheated on, they've been talked about, they've been, you know, backstabbed, they've been thrown under the bus, they've been criticized, they've been demeaned, they've, you know, it's really the hurtful things, the gossipy, you know, talking about somebody's behind my ba behind their back. You know, there's a value that says, you know, if you can't say something to somebody to their face and you shouldn't be saying it. In other words, your conscience follows you, you know, through throughout your your experiences and oftentimes people's consciousness is weighing heavy on them when they're in a relationship with a narcissist. They have a very heavy conscience, meaning there's this inner battle between right and wrong, trust and lack of self-trust, esteem and taking care of your needs and taking care of yourself and taking care of another. And then it becomes not only one of, of quantity, but it becomes also that of quality, meaning a quality relationship. Um, being able for them to get you, to feel heard, to feel really embraced, that you are important, that you, you know, you are real and together and you have something relevant to bring up that it's not that you're just making it up in your mind but people oftentimes feel that they have to then make up a lot in their mind in order to keep up with the narcissist or play their game or be a force to their counterforce in equal in equal energy in equal type so this really is to understand that a narcissist really is in like their own bubble. They're in their own little world. They're like having, you know, it's all about them. And, you know, people oftentimes wonder how can they continue this? Well, this is who they are. This is what they're about. You know, this is how they engage their life. And as a person, this is just how they're going to proceed. This is how they're going to continue. And, you know, you have to be able to accept and that this is who they are from head to toe, from A to Z, from backward, you know, right to left, left to right, in and out. This is who they are. And this is what other people will experience in a relationship with them. So if it's destructive to you, if it's damaging, if it's hurtful, if it's causing you to feel stifled, if it's causing you to feel hindered, if it's causing you to feel suffocated, unheard, unseen, unacknowledged, it's because they're not being able to allow that inner world fuse with that outer world. In other words, your life, who you are, especially sickness brings this up to this, you know, brings this really, you know, to the front and center and the relevance. You know, you'll find this especially important when if you're sick, you're needing, you know, help, um, you've, you know, lost, you've encountered something um, financially where your inner world needs attention. You'll find that the narcissist doesn't give the time of day, the time of night, you know, whatever it is, they're just really not there. In fact, they're on a very, um, what I would say, a very uh, just sort of um, boxed off or predetermined notion of of what they feel that you should fit into. So it's kind of like there's a conforming that other people must do to a mold that they create for them. So you can't be a mold of yourself. You have to be a mold that they're trying to put you put you into. And so it's like the experience of fitting a round peg into a square hole. It just doesn't fit. But oftentimes people make that sacrifice not knowing that they're making this sacrifice of their inner world, their inner life, to trade for this relationship being functional. So oftentimes people who stay with them, they're willing to become dysfunctional for a functional relationship. They're willing to sabotage and live a less than experience or existence for this person. Because whatever excuses they're making in the mind, this is the best I'll, I'll ever get. I've made a commitment to this person. I've made a promise, you know, through sickness and in health. So in other words, oftentimes people think 
that this is all life has to offer them, that it's this superficial way of relating, going without, I must be deprived. So they make up all these excuses until it becomes very serious and they say, wait a second, there's there has to be more to this. And especially when they look around and they see other families or other relationships behaving differently, and then there becomes this sort of jealousy or envy or feeling, you know, empty within that they finally get that leverage within in their inner life. So that's where the healing and the magic happens is in your inner world, your inner life, meaning your world of your connection with yourself, your relationship to yourself and what you personally can redirect and reevaluate and reassess for yourself in the relationship, no matter how many times you have talked yourself out of doing the right thing or whatever little, you know, voice that bubbled to the surface that said, I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be so, you know, I shouldn't be uh, taking on this person in the way that I am. In other words, taking on their negativity, taking on and not getting enough, you know, just settling for crumbs settling for mediocre, settling, 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 you know, but once again, a lot of people say, well, life is about compromise and well, I would want somebody to do this for me. And then they, you know, do this and they make this explanation and I owe this to whoever I'm in a relationship with. So you'll find that a lot of these excuses get then hardwired into the individual who's staying with them. I am not worth attending to. There must be something wrong with me. I'm not like this superficial person. I'm not this uh, person that this of the mold that this person wants me to be. In fact, I unfold from within versus being folded down from without. So oftentimes it's very difficult because people then sort of have this sort of checks and balances and think, well, Maybe the narcissist will come around if they see that I'm sick or if they see that I'm unhappy or they see that I've, you know, been depleted or they'll see that I'm not getting what I need that eventually, you know, it'll, my, my turn will come. My time will come. I will finally be on the attention. Eventually, eventually, if I bring it up enough, if I cry enough, if I scream enough, if I'm absent enough. And that they're wondering why they're not getting like in return because you're not dealing with someone who is like you. You're dealing with somebody who is different. The mistake I find that a lot of people make is they make a lot of excuses for the narcissist, you know, and a lot of excuses as to why they should stay. They don't have enough confidence, self-trust and experience with one's own inner world and having a solid relationship, doing yourself solid and feeling, you know, the I deserve strong enough to be able to make this communication and to have really that communication or that type of communication, the I'm done, this isn't right, this isn't fair, this is unjust, this is sick, this is unhealthy, um, this is, you know, not meaningful, this is not fulfilling, this is not coming out how I wanted. They're so used to saying, you know, are things coming out okay for you? Are you happy? They're so used to putting this other person front and center and thinking, well, eventually I'll get my turn and wondering why it never happens. You're not really going to get this type of acknowledgement and validation. You're not going to give, you're not going to receive oftentimes what you've been giving in like manner. You know, they always say, you know, um, the golden rule, treat others as you'd like to be treated yourself. It's the golden rule that really gets a lot of supply, uh, people who have been scapegoated into a lot of trouble. You know, they're making amends, they're making excuses, they're saying, well, they were here for me, you know, that one day in 1979, they were here for me that one day in 1984, you know, and I owe the rest of my whatever, whatever, you know, because of that. So they're undervaluing their own gifts to the relationship and they're wondering why they feel undervalued. It's because they're, you personally are not putting enough value on yourself. A lot of, they're not, you're not putting enough value on your inner world. They get so accustomed to that being out of balance 
that it's very difficult to make the change to switch within and to say, I got how I feel. I, I know how I feel, even though it's been so long. It, it, may, it might be three months, five months, five years, 10 years, a lifetime. You know, don't let the amount of time that you have been doing this over and over and over di distract you or make you feel like, you know, it's too late or that you're missing something. You know, it's better to embrace your inner life as soon as you can and get to know it, get to hear it, give time for it. Meditation is a great way for you to get and tune into yourself, tune into your inner world. You know, if I, if I really had a, a good question, it would be, how do I feel when I'm in the presence of this person? How does this person make me feel? How do my decisions make me feel? If I could change things and feel for the better, I would begin to. So know what your new beginnings are and what would help you to feel better. Someone who would, you know, be able to just take a walk or do these quote, quote unquote, deep, valuable, meaningful things where you just let, you know, yourself go into nature or take in, you know, a beautiful sunrise or be able to reflect or have prayer or gratitude. Oftentimes these very important emotional states, internal states are not experienced and shared with a narcissist. Think about that one and think what you need to give yourself today. This is your buddy, peace and harmony with you today. And I hope you discover profound gratitude for what you have in your life and fill your own cup and be able to tune into your inner world because that's where the energy will flow once you make that change. I hope these videos help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. Have a beautiful day. It's a great day to change and embrace your inner world.